Hey, welcome to my show. And what we have here is a really old slant pin. It looks like a galaxy. Um, it was put in back in 83, it looks like, or 85, not sure, October of 24. Um, dates on there, the earliest dates that I see on this thing are from uh, 97. Um, take a look at the rating plate there. It is a slant pin. Uh, there's the uh, schematics. Let me see if I can get for you. But uh, since then it's had an upgraded uh, ignition module which is really nice. Uh, the very old style gas valve. And um, your pressure control stock. We've got this set at the lowest possible pressure. Uh, we've got this marked at the zero point of the gauge. The gauge is a little off. Um, safety relief valve here. And when this thing was uh, installed, uh, the state of the art uh, that it came with was a McDonnell Meller number 472 low water cutoff and automatic feeder. Um, but since the owner is going to be turning this into a rental, he wanted to make this as turnkey as possible. So we removed the 47.2 and we were able to install a probe type low water cutoff. We were able to find a plug behind the jacket here and uh, insert the uh, probe type and at the proper level. Uh, that uh, that freed up the uh, skim tapping that the Galaxy is known for. I've got videos on how I uh, cut one open so you can see the trough that's on the inside there. This, this boiler was pretty clean, but it's nice to be able to make sure that that's maintained. And uh, we installed uh, a little bit uh, some nipples and couplings to reinstall the sight glass with new uh, glass tube and gaskets and so forth. We were able to reuse the uh, uh, drain valve for the sight glass. And so we had generally advise uh, the resident to, we got a hose on there, and we generally advise the resident to drain the sight glass once a week one in operation. We installed a full port drain valve here. The uh, Galaxy didn't have a separate tapping for a drain valve, so they usually advise to be put on a heel T. The problem is, is this tends to clog. So we devised it so if this does clog, you can be able to run a, a rod up there to uh, poke, poke through the crud. We installed a quarter turn there. And we used ProPress to mount the VXT24. This was the original shutoff valve to the 47.2, and this was the manual bypass. And now that's pretty much that's what's been done. Um, this is the new type of VXT that allows adjustment by loosening the screws here and then this can be rotated so as you can see the direction direction of flow is different than the old style because you can change it any way you want it um mounted it like that so the uh, numbers could be easily observed and there is a rocker arm switch here so if you need to uh, feed the unit feed, excuse me feed the boiler you can uh, push this button like so and it keeps track of the uh, how long you hold the button down and of course it keeps track of how many time uh, how many gallons it's fed so uh, let's see is we got the wet return here uh, the output of these Units is inch and a, excuse me two and a half inches and they've reduced it down to two. Um, that might be fine. This is a fairly small system. It's only a, a couple of radiators. Um, and this is the drip. Uh, not the way I would have done it, but 
that's what that's what they did. Uh, they got two drips here, one for the front main and one for the rear. Uh, they tied them together above the water line. Not, again, not optimal, but it doesn't bang, so we're just going to leave it alone. If this had was making noise, uh, we'd have to uh, take that right where that 90 is there and tap, run its own separate tap uh, below the, the water line, and that way the steam can't jump across. Uh, this short circuit here, but again, it's not making noise, so fine and well. So this is the smaller main, it's inch and a half. There's the drip. We uh, replaced the vent some time ago, and we found that on this cycle, uh, the vent had failed, so we put a new one on there, we put it up on a stalk. And this again, this is copper pipe going to a small radiator on the second floor rear bedroom. Um, we've got some got some pitch on it, and it didn't bang, so we're good on that. And let me go to the front. So there's the wet return back there, and we've got the wet return running along the bottom there. And there's the drip, and there's the uh, front main. It's uh, one uh, num uh, Gorton number one. So the steam reaches this point and the front of the building at about the same time. Just a little note here: um, back in the day, they would dig one trench, and uh, they would put the gas line and usually feed it into one house and then bring it in. Um, internally to the next house over and uh, that the indicator of that just to make sure you remind it is this ring here that's what they that's what they did back in the day so this, this system definitely started out as a coal because here is the coal chute I guess you can get a good glimpse of that that's quite a shot isn't it right there so it was coal and they uh, converted to oil. You know it's oil because they've got the switch at the top of the stairs to shut it off and uh, for safety. And so we've kept that, put a shield on it to make sure it doesn't get um, turned off by accident. So again, we've got this set at the lowest possible pressure. In, uh, one, uh, the inside is one uh, PSI differential and a half uh, pound uh, cut in. And uh, this is cycling on pressure and uh, doing a pretty good job. So now the automatic feeder is set to uh, keep track of any water loss and uh, keep this boiler running into well into the next century, we hope. Um, thanks again for your comments and, and questions. And uh, please remember to like and subscribe and uh, see you on the next one. Stay frosty.